Hey guys, what's cracking? It's been a hot second since I've done a video and it feels great to be back. Give me a hug. Mwah, mwah. Today's Adventures of Fish Tank Land, Fish Tank Madness TV. No, I'm just kidding. That, that isn't a real thing. But guys, today's video is on water wisteria plant care. And I know some of you guys are thinking to yourself, Chris, we're sick of hearing plant care guides, bro. We want to see uh, uh, plywood tanks, bro. Uh, you're such an idiot. This is dumb. You're sellout. Guys, other cool videos are coming, I promise. I do read your comments, but today's video is on water wisteria plant care. Oh my God, everyone marvel at the Marineland seven gallon portrait tank. It's absolutely magnificent. Um, I have this vertical like rock. It looks so great, even though you guys can't see it that good. All right, are you happy now? I got all technical, I got you guys a good view. Do you want some cookies now too? All right, so water wisteria is a stem plant. Obviously, you can tell that it is a stem plant judged on the fact that all of its leafage and foliage comes off the stem. Water Sprite, its close cousin, I'll call it, is a little bit different. It almost has like mini stems that shoot out. It's commonly mistaken as this plant. This is wisteria though. So because of the stem, what happens is, uh, I'm gonna move it around for you so you get a better view of it. Um, this stem plant, it gets mo- God, I said the word stem like 70 times. Okay, so stem plants get most of their nutrients from the substrate. So this tells you that a planted tank substrate is going to be better because it's going to actually feed the roots of this plant. This plant isn't even that happy right now. I've seen much happier ones. Um, it all- this plant also does feed on the water column nutrients a lot because you can also float this stuff. It's super invasive. Usually a plant that you can just float or plant or just do whatever with and it is does great is invasive because it's so sturdy that it almost becomes like it takes over it takes over waterways. So I'm gonna show you guys how to propagate this plant. I'm gonna give you the care guide super simple. Literally plop it into your substrate, it's gonna grow with gravel, it's gonna grow with anything. If this, if this plant is dying on you, if wisteria is like uh, uh, weaning back or dying out the colorations, what's happening is it's probably not getting in, it's not getting, uh, uh. So as I was saying before I was stumbling with my words like an idiot, is it's a super sturdy plant. Oh no, this plant, this leaf just broke off. No! That's okay, I'll propagate it. Um, so back to what I was saying. Uh, every little plant around here gets propagated. Even if you think it's dead, throw it in some water and some sunlight and see what happens because it's not always dead. For instance, this little, this little piece here, you'd think it was just maybe garbage. Leave it in there, float it for a little while, and you have yourself some root, some uh, runners and roots, and then you plant it. It's that simple. But back to what Chris with ADD was saying, this plant is super hardy, literally throw it in any substrate. If it's a plant substrate, it's gonna do a lot better. Um, water column, you could dose some fertilizer. Be careful of fertilizer though, because um, OCD, Chris doesn't like water stains. Uh, be careful of water ferts because I've seen tanks blow up. I've seen it firsthand. Uh, uh, as far as propagating this plant, one thing I wanna say before propagating this plant, if this plant is dying back, it's probably because there's not enough nutrients in your tank and it's probably deprived it all of the water or the substrate, or uh, you don't have adequate lighting. This is a little kind of a cheap light on these marine lands, but it does the job. So as far as propagating, you can literally cut this plant wherever you want. Uh, well, not wherever you want, between the nodes is gonna be best. Like right here, chiku, and then I'll just replant that in the stem you can see these nodes here. And the reason I'm doing this is because this plant looks kind of ugly. If I'm being honest, you can even see the little side shooters here. I'll show the camera. And it's better to use a scissors because you get a clean cut. It helps the plant kind of like rejuvenate. Between the nodes, you get like these little, uh, little runners, they call them. And then you can literally just plant that. So any part of the stem between the nodes is considered a, a new plant essentially. Uh, what, and then what I'm going to do, move the camera down a little bit. You can watch me do this. I'll even zoom in because we're special. Uh, see those roots? I'm going to just dig it into this fluorite, even though fluorite is not easy to dig into. Ideally, you want to plant it next to this, to this shoot, this stem right here, because this, 
This plant has a massive root structure and that's probably not the greatest idea. But what hap, you know what, I'm gonna move it. I talked myself out of it. All right, so, and as far as planting it, wow, look at those baby guppies in there. I'm such a good fish keeper, I can keep, I can, I can get baby guppies. And here is the bigger stem. See if I can get water all over my floor. Come on camera. Wow, that looks like nothing. Okay, and then what you do is just bump the stem into the substrate. And it's that simple, guys. Actually, I'm not gonna put it in here. I might put it somewhere else. Um, but yeah, here's another here's another little trim. As you can see, the roots right there. Wow, can't even see it. I'm an idiot. And guys, what happens when we cut the stem like that is actually the plant propagates and just grows again. And it is said that when plants get trimmed like that, they actually grow back more full and just more luscious. That's why I'm trimming it back. This plant looked a little lackluster and I'm hoping the stems here, after I cut them, they will just blast up with growth. It's, it's actually the plant's defense mechanism for like in the wild, if an animal were to cut it or break it, that that's how it comes back. So that's how you propagate water wisteria. So yeah, water wisteria is a super easy plant to take care of. A lot of people consider this to be like maybe the second fastest growing plant in the hobby behind hornwort. And it, it, I haven't, what's weird is I haven't gotten it to take off in my water here, but I know uh, I have in the past in other types of water. I don't know if it just, if it's lacking something specific, I'm sure someone else would be able to tell me on the internet in the comment section. But it's just, it hasn't really taken off for me in this in these waters here. But for the most part, even if it's not doing well, this plant's so invasive that it's gonna do its damn thing no matter what. Um, it's, guys, literally it's that simple. It's a heavy root feeder, but you can literally float it like this and it's gonna do crazy things. It kind of blows people away. A lot of people put or a lot of fish keepers put like cuttings like this at the surface of the water in new tank setups because these invasive plants like this, they just swallow and consume all like the imbalances of a new tank syndrome and it works out really well. I prefer guppy grass because it guppy grass just explodes in my waters and, it's, and it, I love it. Same with duckweed, you'll see duckweed in all my tanks. Uh, a lot of people hate it. Uh, I'm about to do a video on it, but it is what it is. Let me know in the comment section what you think of this water wisteria aquarium plant care. Uh, wisteria care is super, super easy. Uh, please give this video a like for the love of fish keeping. And also give it a like if you think I'm crazy. Uh, you know, I haven't asked that in a while and I'm pretty certain I'm crazy. So please let me know in the comments.